Hey friend, Chris here from mylogicprorules.com, the website that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro. Today I want to tell you about a feature that has saved me so many times, and that is how to grab or capture audio performances even when you're not recording at that moment. So let's say you have a microphone or an instrument connected to your interface or your Mac, and you or a performer are just listening to the project, you're not recording yet, but you're rehearsing. You're testing out different ideas, trying to get into the groove, and then you land on a performance, a take, an idea that is amazing. But you weren't recording, so that idea is lost forever, right? Well, in fact, if you follow these three tips I'm going to outline in today's video, you can be sure that Logic is always listening to your audio tracks and is ready to grab that audio performance before it's lost forever. And we're not going to deal with software instruments in this video because I have a video dedicated to capture record in Logic Pro for MIDI and software instruments. I'll link to that in the description below. But we're going to deal with playing a guitar along with drummer, just listening along, just playing along, and then grabbing that performance after the fact. Let's dig in. Okay, so you can see that I have a drummer track here with Kyle and his SoCal kit. And I also have an audio channel strip here that I plan on recording guitar through with the old school punk patch, which can be found in the library under the crunch guitar section right here. And we can pop open pedal board and amp designer. And we can see that we're working with something akin to a Marshall stack. Now, before we go any further, number one, step one is you want to go up to record and you want to allow quick punch in. And once you set this, you don't ever have to set it again, but this is crucial to this entire capturing audio on the fly. Next up, we're going to turn on software monitoring so you can hear me play guitar through this particular channel strip. And let's also turn on low latency monitoring mode, just hopefully to prevent any sort of latency or delay as I'm trying to perform with drummer. Now, the second most important step to this workflow is you want to be sure to record enable the track that you plan on monitoring and performing through. Of course, you could turn on input monitoring mode just to hear yourself play through this channel strip, even when you're not recording. But input monitoring mode is not ideal because we need Logic to be primed and ready to record at a moment's notice. So we're going to turn that off, turn on record enable. And now we can hear ourselves perform through this channel strip. And let's turn down our channel strip just a bit. And at this point, we can hear ourselves play along with drummer. But if we decide that there is a performance here that we need to grab before it's lost, we can do it because we've record enabled this track and channel strip. Logic is now listening to our audio track just in case there's something there we need to grab. At this point, I'm just going to play a couple chords to try to get into the mood, the groove of this drum beat. And then in the second half of this drummer performance, I'll begin playing my intended performance as if I just came up with it on the fly. Let's give it a try right now. I'm just going to hit spacebar to begin playback. Cool, so I haven't stopped playback. You can see that the playhead is still moving. I've turned off the click just so I can speak over, you know, the silence. And at this point, if we want to capture that audio, I'm purposefully letting the playhead just continue on. Don't hit stop. Don't stop playback. Instead, press R to begin recording and then stop playback. So as you can see, it looks like we just have this empty region here, right? And let's just turn off record enable for now. It looks like there's nothing there. But in fact, if we hover our mouse over the bottom left-hand half of the region, we have this tool to extend the left boundary of the region. We can drag. Just keep dragging. Look at that. There's the entire performance that I wasn't recording at the time, but was able to grab before it was lost forever. The steps are again, number one, under the record menu, Enable allow quick punch in. Once you set this, you don't ever have to think about it again. Number two, record enable your channel strip. And number three, just hit R 
before you stop playback. If you land on a performance that is just fantastic and you need to capture it before it's lost forever. And at this point, we can take a listen to my performance. Perfect. So let's get rid of that tail end of the region. Let's also clean up the front end because it was just a bunch of noise, basically. And now I want to show you how this can also be applied to take folders as well. You can actually adjust the boundaries of your different takes in your take folders and reveal some magic that maybe was hidden away. So at this point, let's go up to the count in, right click, and I'll set it to two bars. And in this scenario, we intend to record. We plan on recording. We're not just listening back, but maybe there's some magic at the front end that we want to keep that is just hidden, you know, behind the scenes. So let's record enable. I'll press R to begin recording. We'll have a two bar count in and I'll just make some noise just to illustrate. Here we go. Okay. So if we now take a look at our take folder, we can see we have take one, we have take two. And this time around, instead of hovering our mouse over the bottom half of the left edge of the take, we instead have to hover our mouse over the upper half of the left edge. If we click and drag once again, look at that. There's all that pick scraping that I did right before I began playing. Cool. So this pick scraping, probably not a value to this recording. However, if you're recording a vocalist or a musician that's playing along and rehearsing before you hit R to begin that quick punch in, there might be some magic there. There might be something there that will help you gel different takes together in a comp. There might be a better take hidden away in that left edge that you just didn't know about. So I recommend if you're working on some projects, take a look inside your take folders, take a look at those single audio regions that you recorded and see if there's something on that left edge that really could be helpful to your project that you just didn't know about because it was hidden away in the background. In fact, let's go to a different project of mine and I'll show you how much is hidden away within a take folder in this different project. All right, this is a brand new project working on an album with my friend. But if we take a look down here, there's a bounce of the vocal performance, but let's take a look at the take folder for this vocal performance. So you can see a lot of comping has gone on, basically phrase by phrase. If we pop open the take folder and take a look below, zoom out actually, well, look at that. There's about 76 takes for this one vocal performance. I really run my buddy through the gamut when we work on these songs. But again, we're looking inside the take folder. If we hover our mouse over the upper half of the left edge, we get that bracket tool that allows us to extend the region or take. And let's see how far we can extend this. Oh man, look, that's basically a whole other take hiding in the background, right? Let's go down to take 75, do the same thing. Oh man, that's awesome. We have take, I already messed with take 75. Let's take a look at maybe zoom out here, take a look at some of these takes. So once again, we just drag our mouse. There's so much magic that's hiding that you just can't see, but it's there. And this is a project that I recorded a different day that you know, I've saved multiple times. This audio is still there. It's hidden and saved as long as you make sure to turn on allow quick punch in. So as you can see by following these steps of allowing quick punch in under the record menu, record enabling your tracks just in case there's something that you want to grab before it's lost, or even for takes and performances that you are recording, that you intended to record, there are bits of audio hidden away that you can reveal for your songs and projects that might hold the key, might hold that extra little bit that you needed for your songs or just provide a better transition or just gives you food for further creative activity. So I hope this video was helpful for you. If it was, as always, I highly recommend subscribing to the channel, Why Logic Pro Rules, or subscribing on the website itself, whylogicprorules.com. Every week I'm posting new videos, emails, or posts to help you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro. Thanks so much.